And this is your tech news briefing for Friday, August 26th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. You've probably heard this before. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That's from the Apollo 11 mission in 1969. Now, NASA wants to return to the moon for another giant leap into the future. Here's NASA Administrator Bill Nelson speaking earlier this month. It's a future where NASA will land the first woman and the first pu- person of color on the moon. And on these increasingly complex missions, astronauts will live and work in deep space and will develop the science and technology to send the first humans to Mars. Nelson is talking about the Artemis I mission that's set to take off from Cape Canaveral, Florida on Monday morning. The uncrewed test flight is kicking off NASA's efforts to return humans to the moon by 2025. But the effort hasn't been easy, and it's far from over. Joining us to discuss what we can expect from the Artemis I trip is our space and aviation reporter, Micah Maidenberg. Hi, Micah. Thanks for joining me. Hey, Zoe. All right, so Artemis I is scheduled to take off on Monday morning. What exactly should we expect to happen when it does? So this is a test mission. There's not going to be any astronauts on board. But Artemis I is, you know, a really important precursor to that bigger ambition of taking people back to the moon. So on on Monday, NASA may try to launch this gigantic rocket called the Space Launch System that has a spacecraft called Orion stacked on top of it. There's been, of course, many rocket launches conducted by SpaceX, United Launch Alliance, other companies, but nobody has sort of launched to orbit a rocket this powerful in decades. After the launch happens, the main rocket and the boosters, you know, fall away. Other parts of the spacecraft on top are deployed. And uh, roughly around 90 minutes into the trip, another propulsion system connected to Orion will, will try to give Orion like a big push toward the moon. And then Orion has a journey to make, you know, to get to an orbit around the moon where it will stay for at least six days, maybe maybe a bit longer before its return trip back to Earth. What is NASA going to be watching for in this test flight? This is a high stakes test flight for NASA. They want to keep pressing on to those you know flights with astronauts on board. So they are going to be trying to glean every bit of data about how Orion, the spacecraft, SLS, the rocket, and all the the sort of related software and hardware uh, for launch and operations works. You know, one really key sort of test on this mission is how Orion's crew capsule, that's where astronauts would be stationed, comes back into Earth. So we know private companies are working with NASA on this. How have the contractors been performing here, particularly building Artemis? Artemis depends on a lot of the the biggest aerospace companies in the U.S., Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Aerojet Rocketdyne. They're an engine maker and thousands of of smaller suppliers. You know, over the years, the, the NASA inspector general has pointed out complications, technical issues, challenges that virtually all the the major, you know, contractors have faced. Those have led to cost delays, timeline delays, you know, and the agency and its contractors building these rockets and spacecraft and related kind of hardware have had to, to try to wrestle those down and get through those. The inspector general has really criticized a number of the contractors for poor performance over time. And, you know, those companies said, look, we're, we're making adjustments, we're improving you know, to to help bend down the cost curve in the future. So dare I ask how much this mission is going to cost? The estimate from NASA's inspector general is $4.1 billion for production and sort of launch operations. That's the expected per flight cost for the first four Artemis missions, not just, just this one. And it's a number that the inspector general has called unsustainable. So I want to take a step back for a second. You know, why does NASA want to return to the moon after all this time? I mean, it'll be over 50 years by the time NASA sends people back. 
science and exploration is kind of broadly the answer. You know, NASA, as, as you said, like hasn't been on the surface of the moon since 1972. And, you know, the agency has had various ideas and efforts, programs over the years to sort of return to the lunar surface. But this mission sort of is the, the culmination of an effort that began more than a decade ago to get back to the exploration and roots of the agency and also focus on science. I should say also that, you know, NASA is talking about this return to the moon as a bit different than in the past. You know, they want to get to the moon and eventually create a more permanent presence there and sort of use that knowledge to get on to to Mars. All right. So if everything does go right with Artemis 1, what comes next? After Artemis 1 is Artemis 2. (laughs) I mean, again, this is a a test mission that is meant to allow NASA and the contractors to get as much data about the performance of these vehicles and how they operate in, you know, the severe, very tough environment of space ahead of putting astronauts on that Orion crew capsule, possibly in 2024. And of course, the 2024 mission would send astronauts around a lunar orbit, you know, around the moon, bring them back to Earth. And then it's in 2025 that the agency would attempt again to transport astronauts down to the lunar surface, bring them back up to lunar orbit, and then, you know, shoot them back home, back to Earth. All right. That's our reporter, Micah Maidenberg. Thanks so much for joining us, Micah. Thanks for having me, Zoe. That's it for Tech News Briefing this week. Our producer is Julie Chang. Our supervising producer is Chris Sinsley. Our executive producer is Kateri Yokum. And I'm your host, Zoe Thomas. As always, thanks for listening and have a wonderful weekend.